This is a performance guide for players who are at the low or mid-spec range of hardware and who want to get the game over the edge from the game being almost playable to being really smoothly playable. And in this guide I'm not going to promise you gigantic gains over 80 FPS or something. Because I think there's some pretty dishonest guides out there who promise you a jump from 100 FPS to 180 FPS. However, what they leave out until late in the video is that you have to turn off path racing to get that game. And then they keep telling you about reinstalling the game and removing mods, and those are all superficial things designed to stretch the length of a performance guide video. Okay, so what I can promise you here is modest performance gains while retaining the most important graphic setting, which is path racing. So the entire guide here is going to be about how to keep path racing on and compromise on anything else you have to, just to keep path racing on. Because it's the most important graphics technology in the entire game. It's the way the lighting realistically is calculated as it wraps itself around objects and as it bounces into areas that the direct, direct uh, light can't reach. And that's more important and visually more impressive than anything else in the game. Okay, so the first question you might have is, how much does a CPU, uh, the GPU matter? And I noticed something odd when I was benchmarking it. Okay, so I got a 4060 over here. As you can see, I got 48 FPS. I got some mild mouse lag, like within the range of playable for me. Okay, and the setting I'm playing on is frame generation on. Now that's a 4000 card exclusive uh, frame generation thingy. You need a 4000 card to have that on. Super resolution, I got to balanced. That's a setting in the middle. DLSS sharpness, that, that has no performance impact, just on default. Reconstruction, that's the much advertised feature I got off because it actually doesn't change the performance. It only makes the image sharp. However, on uh, balanced or lower settings with super resolution, it makes the game look it's it makes the game look like it's everything is made out of 3D scanned paper. It looks like a Google Earth in real time. So keep that one off. And I'm playing this on a 1080 resolution. Okay, now let's check out the benchmark. So, until a few days ago, until yesterday actually, I had Intel i7 6700K. That's a really old CPU. And three weeks ago, I bought a 4060, and I did a benchmark on 163 version and 2.0 when it came out. And then I did a benchmark today. And here's the result for the balanced DLSS settings for my new upgraded CPU. That's a current mid-range CPU and the same graphics card. Now notice here. The measured FPS in the benchmark is within one frame of my seven-year-old other CPU. But it tells you two things, that the graphics card, the GeForce 4060, does what it's supposed to do. Like, provide playable FPS, because in most parts in the game, I get up to 100 FPS, and in the most demanding parts of Dogtown, it can drop down to 30, 40. And the... Um, the graphic setting of this game actually tells you for path racing that you need at least a 4070 or 3090. Oh, in theory, a 4060 delivers playable FPS because 4050 FPS is a playable FPS in a video game, okay? The problem is the underlying mouse lag is really bad. But before I had this new CPU, in this scene, the mouse lag was like one or two seconds mouse lag. It was so bad you could barely play it. Now in those, now in this most demanding area of Dogtown, it's fluctuating from playable to slightly unplayable, depending how much AI is running around and whatever the game is doing in the background. And in this guide, I'm going to try to push that with some tweaked settings into a more playable range. But if you have a slightly better CPU and the same graphics card, a lower graphics card, you might get better results. So what I did in the benchmark was I went to the different gameplay settings, which I know are more heavy on the graphics card. Let me see. And I isolated them with everything else being max to measure the FPS. See, I got, that's the balance baseline. Then I went to cascaded shadow resolution, set it to the lowest setting without it being off completely. Local shadow, mesh quality, distant shadow resolution, volumetric fog, cloud medium, screen space reflections, ambient occlusion. All these settings cause like an FPS difference of 
one, two percent, and sometimes five to ten percent. So almost not measurable. Some settings like contact shadows off would actually lower the FPS for some reason. I don't know why. So these settings don't really matter that much on this particular configuration. Now, what actually did matter was antivirus. I'm using Kaspersky antivirus standard and did a few tests that were actually quite interesting. Okay, that's the baseline balance benchmark I got. That's the antivirus um, not being off, but it added an exception to the um, it added an exception to the program. So in the, if you got Kaspersky, basically you go to Cyberpunk Exe, that's in German now. Um, so it doesn't scan files open by the Exe. The activity of the program to not check it, and the fourth point, subprograms to also not check. Okay. And then I had to restart the game. And then I measured it. And again, the baseline is there's a baseline over here. Then I got a marked improve. So if the antivirus isn't monitoring your Cyberpunk exit, I actually got an improve in FPS. Notice here I almost got a temp. Actually, yeah, it's a twenty percent improvement on the low FPS end on the um, on the benchmark, and about five percent on average, and five percent on on the max. So yeah, set your antivirus to not monitor the Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven exit, and you might get five to ten percent FPS improvement on average. Now as for the other settings. They might not be like that important in the benchmark scene. However, if you're like in a room that has a lot of fog in it, and if you set a, set the fog quality to lower, you'll get an FPS bump that you'll notice. The same as if you're in the market in Dogtown with a lot of artificial light sources, and you get something that lowers the local shadow quality, you get some FPS bump. But the problem is, you then have to do it for every senior and to finally adjust it, and that's not really practical for the average gamer. So the only setting that really matters that you can squeeze out more FPS to get over that edge from unplayable to playable is you, you tweak the super resolution, okay? Okay, that super resolution down to you're balanced. And if I look in this direction, okay, now it's like tabbing back in. It's taking a moment to... Um... It's a mouse lag has to go down a bit. Notice here the, the latency on the NVIDIA overlay, it's going slowly down. Because I think the graphics card is getting hammered, as you can see, like GPU is almost at 100 all the time. So it takes like a few seconds once you're back into the game to um, get responsive mouse again. Now this is playable for me. Now, in this area, it's not really playable. Because uh, and I have a weird suspicion is that the developers probably were told by NVIDIA to make sure this trademark off area around the pyramid and the stadium later to when they designed it with the budget they have for the detail in the scene to keep it so at least need a 4070 card to play it properly. I guess is there's some interest to make sure people buy 4070 cards over 4060 cards. Because I think the game looks fantastically beautiful in some other parts of Dogtown while getting much better FPS. So I think they were a bit too loose with the performance uh, tolerances um, to push it more into the high-end graphics card range. Okay, so how do you squeeze the most out of it? Well, for that, I'm going to switch to daytime so you can see the effect of it a bit better. Because as I said at the beginning, this is not a video where I'm to, going to promise you gigantic improvements. It's going to be modest, but you're going to preserve path tracing. So that's the important thing. Okay, now we got daytime. Some moving objects, so I can see it better. Okay, I got the normal everyday traffic coming in. Looks nice. Here. Okay, now I got 42 FPS. Some mouse lag, if it would be in combat. Yeah, notice it, it's going up and down all the time. Okay, so it's, it's not really that playable. Now, the most important settings you can do here is you lower the super resolution setting. Let's go down to performance. Notice that ray reconstruction always defaults itself on. So you press apply, it's on. I have to turn it off again to keep it off. Like this. Okay, let's see if it's better. You see, the image quality isn't actually that worse. Like, it's almost not noticeable that the... Because what the upscaling does, it, it lowers the accuracy of the lighting a bit. But the overall image quality, if you squint, like, you don't even see a difference. Okay. Let's go down to ultra performance. What is here? Ray construction always wants to turn itself on again. Let's turn it off. I'm running ultra performance. 
You know, the game is much more responsive than the mouse. And the FPS, FPS is much more stable, like 74 FPS. And that's, I think, much more playable. But then again, the area around the pyramid is the worst entire part of the game. If you can walk around that scene with minimal mouse lag, then you can go through the entirety of Night City with good FPS. Okay, that's like the benchmark of how, how the worst it can get. Like over there in the stadium and over here. Okay, so this is how you basically... That's the most important setting for performance. Just lower the performance setting for the DLSS up, up, upscaling. Now you can take this even a step further. Now this is more of an artistic step. If you turn on ray reconstruction, I'm warning you, the game is going to look very weird. It will look like... Yeah, just... Let's take a look. Now it looks like a real-time JPEG compression and Google Earth uh, Street View in real time. But it's super smooth. Look at this. It's almost like... Now this has still an advantage if you play like that. You have the, the really over-aggressive sharpening and notice the blur everywhere. But notice the underlying lighting quality is still amazing. It's still there. Like You can still see the, the daylight, the way it correctly bounces and, and how everything, everything is illuminated. So it's an acquired taste, but yeah, if you're on a low-end PC, play an auto-performance DLSS, and if you want the um, ray construction on, it has a certain artistic effect that adds to the game, depending if you like it, but you get used to it. It feels like it feels like a photorealistic borderlands in some way. See that? Especially as you move through it, it's, it's blurry, it's messy, but it's still path racing. Now, some people might say, why should you obsess over path racing so much? I'm going to show the difference here. Okay, this is path racing. I'm going to set it back to balanced. Apply. And I'm going to turn off path tracing, just regular ray tracing, because some people say ray tracing is good enough. Okay. You see the difference? Now in this completely daylit scene, you probably don't see much of a difference in gameplay. Well, let me show you how it looks like inside of a car. Okay, let's take a Delamain car. Okay. I picked this car especially. Notice here, looking back at the car, and I'm currently on regular ray tracing without path racing on. Let's change the settings again and turn on full path racing. Do you see the difference? Notice how the, this beautifully overexposed daylight ray comes in and how it bounces photorealistically into the areas that are not directly hit by sunlight. Notice the difference here in the brightness to the lower area. And that's how, that's the real magic of, of path racing, how bounced light reacts in areas not directly lit by something. So yeah, and I'll take, oh wait, I'm actually lowering the settings again, so it's more playable. Let's go to ultra performance. Ray construction on. So yeah, I'd rather play with that beautiful lighting, even if it's, it looks like a, like Borderlands in some way. But I think that's more important than path racing off and and high, highly sharpened settings because um, how sharp your screen looks is not as important for the graphics, how you perceive the beauty of the graphics as the way the light works on it.